Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whatever time it is for you. I'm Bishop Daryl Kelly, and welcome to the show, or to the live broadcast. <laughs> I am going to start off by doing the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as well as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespasses against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, when we come on and we talk about God, we always should open up with a prayer. Because prayer is definitely important and is needed, especially with the times that we are having right now. We are having some difficult times. But you know what I was doing? I was studying the Ten Commandments. I'm quite sure everybody is very familiar with the Ten Commandments. And the reason why we are having difficulties in our lives is because we, as God's children, are not following the Ten Commandments as God has given to us. 
Man has not gave us these Ten Commandments. These Ten Commandments came from God himself. So I want to go ahead and read the Ten Commandments to you. And I'm quite sure you guys can pull out your Bibles and follow along. And you guys probably know the Ten Commandments. Number one, do not have any other God before God. Did you hear that? Do not have any other God before God. So that means that there is only one God. And that's why I wrote the book, the book of Wugin, which is an acronym, which stands for God of the universe, God of the world, God of all gods, God of everything, and God of anything, including me. Because there's one God. And we have to follow the Ten Commandments. And once again, that is, do not have any other gods before God. Let's talk about two. Do not make yourself an idol. Because no matter what, God is the only idol in this world and on this planet. People make themselves as idols, but they forget about the most important thing. And that is God. That is the idol of the world and of the life. Is that something that you have to understand every single day? You are not an idol. You are God's child. And we, as children of God, we as Christians, we as Wuginians, we have to understand that there is only one God. And we cannot make ourselves an idol. Let's talk about three. Do not take the Lord's name in vain. Do not take the Lord's name in vain. A lot of people always take the Lord's name in vain. And I try my best not to do that. And when I do do that, I ask God, for forgiveness. You know, we're all human, right? We make mistakes. But that's something really, really important. You cannot take God's name in vain. What you need to do instead of taking his name in vain, we should pray to him. And it says when two or more people are together in God's name, he is in the midst of us. So instead of using God's name in vain, Use him to help you get out of your problems. Talk to him because now he's in the presence of you when you're talking to him. You don't have to use his name in vain. Use him to work with you to help you understand what it is that you need in your life. Let's talk about number four. Remember the Sabbath day. And keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. You know, because God had built this world for all of us. And you know, he took the Sabbath day off. That is so that he can rest. We all work and we work hard. And we work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But sometimes you need to take time off. To remember the Sabbath day and to rest as God had rest. If you can't do that because of circumstances, then take time out while you're at work, while you're driving, while you're headed to an appointment, while you're on the phone talking. Take time out to keep that day holy. You keep that day holy, it's only going to do what? Better your day. And then if you have to go to work and you have to do something, ask God to give you a better opportunity. And he will definitely allow you to have the Sabbath day. Number five, honor your mother and your father. That is very, very important to me. A lot of people nowadays, they forgot what that really is and what it meant. 
Number five is honor your mother and your father. That's really important. Because they bought you in the world. No matter what, you're supposed to agree to disagree. Smile and listen because your parents is only telling you something that they already know and they don't want you to experience it as well. Don't think that they're lecturing you. They're just trying to protect you. That's what parents are supposed to do. And I really and truly feel bad for those who do not honor their parents. That is very important. You have to honor your mother and your father. Six, do not murder. And everywhere you go in the world, that is taking place. Murder every day. You know when the Ten Commandments was written, there was no murder. When the Ten Commandments was written, we wasn't fair of our lives. But the world has become so bad that murder does exist, but we need to pray to God and ask him to protect us from evil. And we need to pray for the people. You know you have sometimes negative thoughts, but you know what? Them negative thoughts can get you into some problems and situations that you really don't want. All you have to do is pray to God. Get on your knees and talk to God before you go out and do something that is going to hurt you for the rest of your life. Your life is more important than anything. So if you don't understand what that means, I'm going to tell you like this. Not only if you do not follow number six, you will be somewhere for the rest of your life. But then after that lifetime, you still won't make it to heaven because God is going to be there waiting for you. And he's going to say, did you follow number six? Do not murder. Number eight, do not steal. You can't steal. All you do is ask God for it and he will give it to you. He will give it to you if you ask him. He will give it to you if you trust in him. Don't steal because everything in this world belongs to God. And if he gave it to someone, why can't he give it to you? All you have to do is have faith and believe it because we all are created equally in this world. God gave us all the opportunity of life to have things because all things belongs to God. Do not steal. Number nine, do not testify or fear false witness against your neighbor. Have you ever had a neighbor or a person in your life that just made up a lot of lies on you just to hurt you? Have you ever witnessed somebody testifying against you in the wrong way for no reason whatsoever? Because they think that they're getting a trophy or a reward? No, you cannot say anything or testify to your neighbors about anything that's wrong because these are your sisters and brothers. And the Bible says you have to love your neighbor like yourself. So every time you do something to your neighbor, you need to look in the mirror because you're doing it to yourself. You're hurting yourself when you hurt someone else. But most importantly, you are disappointing God. And we cannot disappoint God. If we say that we want to be saved, if we say that we want to be true believers and Christians of God, you have to walk the light. You have to walk the light and you have to believe in God and let him lead you to the promised land. 
And number 10, do not covet. Do not covet. Now, number 10 is very important to me because that means if you see something that someone else has and you want it, and then you plan to take it from them, that is wrong. And the Bible says, do not covet. But if you say, hey, I like your car, and you pray to God, he will give you a car. He will give you a house. He will give you a wife. He will give you a friend. He will give you a job. He will give you money. He will do anything for you. But do not covet to get it. Because at the end of the day, it's not following the Ten Commandments. Now, I want you to go ahead and open up Proverbs. We're going to go to Proverbs. And I want you to go to chapter 3. And we're going to read verse 1. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. How can we say that we are Christians and God's children, but at the end of the day, we do not follow the Ten Commandments? I'm not perfect. Only Jesus is perfect. But we can at least try. We can try by praying, by forgiving, by understanding, by loving, by acceptance, by unity. We can try because you are living in a world where you are surrounded by negativity. If you want to be surrounded with negativity, it's because you allow yourself to be. All you have to do is say, I'm going to tell Jesus on you. You tell a person who's negative or treats you bad, I'm going to tell Jesus on you. Then you step away from them and you pray for them. But you don't stay there and become a negative person just like the person that is negative. And I wrote a book called The Book of Wugim. And the Book of Wugim is an acronym which stands for God of the universe, God of the world, God of all gods, God of everything, and God of anything, including me. You can call us at 888-669-4441, and we will deliver you a book. You know what? Today for you, this book is only $5. You go to Amazon, it'll cost you more. But guess what? We're not trying to sell you books. We are trying to give you knowledge and understanding and love and appreciation. What I'm going to do is read a short chapter out of the book of Ugeen. Very, very, very great book. You should buy one if you can. All right. Don't be fooled. Be smart. Get ready for the days are coming for a struggle that's going to be unbelievable to all mankind. Love God. And love God's children. And with that being said, I'm going to close this sermon with a song called A Storm is Coming. And we'll see you next week. Storm is Coming by Daryl Kelly. When you hear the song, you're going to love the song. You're going to relate to the song and you know what I'm going to do is talk about it but first what I want to do is pray for the people 
who got caught in the storm. You know, there's hurricane season every year. And we be praying that the hurricane goes right by us. But for those who was affected by the hurricane, I want to pray for you right now. Lord, my God, in the name of Jesus, when one or two people come together in your name, God, you say, God, that you are in the midst of us, God. And we truly believe in that, God, in the name of Jesus. And we want to pray right now, God, for the people, God, who got stuck in a storm, God, that hit Florida, God. And, 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 and it just went and did a lot of destruction. So we need to get together and pray for the people that was caught in a storm. And our prayers is with you here. So what I'm going to do is read something from Psalms. Open up Psalms 31. And this is the last chapter of the evening. Well, the last chapter and last verse. In thy, O Lord, do not put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. So, take this service, this prayer that we did today in this sermon. Take it serious, and God will always lead you into righteousness. Well, what we want to do is thank you so much for joining us this evening. And you can call us anytime at 888-669-4441 if you need prayer, if you have any questions, or if you want to get the book of Ugin, just call us. If you want to get a hat, you can call us. We're going to donate a lot of stuff to folks, and we really, really, really thank you, and we love you. If I don't love you, then I'm not the one to say I love God because I love God. And if I love God, I got to love you because the Bible says we have to love each other. In the name of Jesus. I'll see you next time. God is good. Make sure you join me next week, Tuesday. Every Tuesday, I want to see you. Because I love you and I want you to understand that the storm is coming. It's a song and here it goes. Let's go.